My young friends, and some of those not so young, thank you for being here. You are the reason I love working at BYU. Okay, I want you to hold out your hand and look at the tip of your finger and imagine a single grain of sand. Hold it at arm's length and imagine the tiny patch of sky that would be covered by that grain of sand. In 1995, astronomers pointed the Hubble telescope at a dark patch of sky about that size, where nothing was visible. But by exposing the image for more than 100 hours, objects so far away that they are trillions of times too faint to be seen with your eyes were revealed for the first time. There are over 3,000 galaxies in that small patch of sky. Each of those galaxies contains billions of stars. In 2012, a similar image was created for a different patch of sky by combining multiple Hubble images. Like the original deep field image, thousands of new galaxies were discovered. Whatever tiny, tiny patch of sky we point a powerful enough telescope at, we see thousands of galaxies far away. This latest deep field image from the James Webb Space Telescope shows some galaxies so far away that it took more than 13 billion years for the light to reach us. We see them as they were 13 billion years ago when the universe was only 4% of its current age. If the universe is now a young adult like many of you, some of these galaxies formed when the universe was just learning to walk. In our own galaxy, the solar system began forming from a large cloud of gas and dust that collapsed 4,600 million years ago. Eventually, the center of our solar system became dense enough for the sun to form. Planets also formed, gas giants like Jupiter, rocky terrestrials like our Earth, and the not demoted, but in a class of their own, dwarf planets like Pluto, Eris, and Haumea. Our own planet began to form, as it began to form, evidence suggests that it was struck by a Mars-sized protoplanet. That collision tilted the Earth on its axis, giving us yearly seasons, and the debris from that collision formed the moon, giving us tides and beautiful moonlight. And so the history of the earth began. I like to think of the earth's history as a four volume set, 4,600 pages, each page chronicling one million years. I am wonderstruck when I think about the, where the different historical events fit in this account. Single-celled life would debut at the end of volume one. Multicellular life would not appear until sometime in volume four. Isn't that amazing? Pangaea, that supercontinent that you learned about in eighth grade earth science, it didn't form until about 250 pages from the end of volume four. About that same time, dinosaurs were on the rise. And then, 66 pages from the end of the last volume, an asteroid about the size of the Provo Orem area impacted the Earth. That cataclysm and its aftermath killed 75% of Earth's animal species, but paved the way for large mammals to replace dinosaurs as the celebrities of the animal kingdom. It transformed the earth to accommodate human life. A lot of things happened at the end of volume four, and yet everything that we might think of as recent happened on the last page. In fact, all of human civilization happens on the very last line of the very last page of volume four. Isn't that incredible? If you were writing that line, what would it say? 